you have any idea of how you would handle, say, like order history and, and other circularization of stuff? Of your, your order history. And is that, is that all? Is that like a real time from hybrid? Or yeah. Is that important? Yeah, it's, it's real time. Uh, all these are made over HTTP clients uh, back into hybrid using the commerce session and, and cookies that we, or cookies so we established. Users are uh, also in hybrid? They are maintained, but they're first established on the, the CP5 side and then uh, created in hybrid. Okay. Are there any major features of Hybris that you know of, like like selling points of Hybris that are not supported with an AM integration? That's one thing I, I didn't get to look at, but I know um, it's one of the consideration, considerations I'll talk about is since AEM is driving this integration, Adobe's uh, responsible for it, you're really beholden to what they choose to make a, a feature or include in the integration. So up until recently, things like promotions or vouchers weren't part of the integration. What, what version of Hybris do they support? So right now, they're supporting uh, 5, 5, 504. And uh, part of what determines that is Hybris has to give the APIs over to uh, Adobe as part of the, the partnership. Uh, it takes them a little, little while to make any changes that are necessary, and then they make a release. So they're expected to release that pretty soon here in, in Q2. And I would expect that to, um, you know, that could either be a really short change, depending on how many updates there are to, to the API, or a really big change, say, for instance, going from major versions of Hybris. Can I ask you a question? The, the payment processing page that was presented when you had the credit card information, is that part of the interface, or it was, was it created specifically on AEM? Part of the interface in Hybris? Well, is it part of the integration that they have built, or is it somebody created that page on AEM? Is there a payment processing Yeah, out of the box, component? there's a payment right. processing component page uh, where you can configure it based upon your, your rules in Hybris. Because it, I mean, there are also rules, like when the, the, it's a credit card processing, right? So rules are on the information on credit card cannot be... Yeah, and I, I know you can make this type of integration. They, they claim you can make it PCI compliant. Right. So that's something you'd be able to do. Do we have to do it specially or will it be... It doesn't come, no, it doesn't come out of the box. That's something you'd have to, okay. to go make, make it work. Can I, can I use Bitcoin? <laughs> <laughs> to pay if, if you can in the card. Find a provider. Yeah, find a provider, hook it up. That's all Just you. hook it up, okay. Hire a bank is now in competition with CyberSource. <laughs> <laughs> Overstock. Yes. Yeah, seriously. So um, this is how it works. I kind of went through uh, quite a few of these details already, but this is the big picture for uh, authoring. So we eliminated one role with this uh, type of integration. There's no longer a an author on the... Uh, hybrid side, so all the authoring is done in AEM. We still have our PEM user entering in product information. Uh, one big change is that the entire product catalog gets imported into uh, CQ. Uh, after that happens, uh, again, we have our authors using the product information. Um, and uh, volatile information will come, or non volatile information comes directly from uh, the database in CQ5. And volatile information like pricing comes uh, from hybrids. And that can, that's, that's done primarily at runtime. You can configure it to be over uh, on the server side, HTTP uh, GET, or it can be done via AJAX. And um, big changes for the shopper. Shopper is no longer going to hybrids. Shopper is on the AEM side, hitting AEM. AEM. Everything is being rendered there. Um, again, non-volatile information coming out of uh, a CQ. And this time, uh, we're on the published side, so the, this is part of the online catalog. And then the, the, um, the volatile information coming from, uh, from hybrid. So you said something about the users. You said the users are created first in CQ, then they are sent back to hybrid? Yeah, so that's, that's uh, an instance of it here would be the shopper created and, and sent to hybrid. So if there was already an instance of hybrid existing, hybrid existing before, and having some users is there, so you kind of. I don't think, uh, I don't think that's really part of the the integration. So you do it. You would have to figure out how to get those 
those hybris or those hybris users to flow back into to CQ. That would be a whole lot easier if you were storing passwords in clear text. Passwords, <laughs> yeah. But that is, is not a, is it, is it out of the box uh, utility to create the user? Yeah, uh, that's all, all, all out of the box. And all the, the sort of the profile management, all those features are, are in AEM. And uh, considerations, I actually covered quite a few of these. Um, so a full set, a full feature set, what I just demoed, only is only available in AEM 561 with the 562 commerce package, which you have to request uh, request from Adobe. Um, and then on the hybrid side for this, uh, Adobe is driving the integrations responsible for it, so they get to decide what version of Hybris is supported. Uh, Hybris 5.1 is coming up in Q2. Uh, one of the big considerations for AEM is performance. So if you're in, uh, importing uh, very large catalogs, you know, 100,000 products to 500,000 products, that's sort of what the, the limit, the published limit of what this will support. Uh, Adobe recommends uh, offloading some, some things. If you're uh, importing assets along with the product information, you could offload that, uh, the asset processing to another CQ instance through clustering. Or you could only pro uh, import the product data. Uh, I mentioned the current limitations on, on products and also structure. Um, you know, the, the reference implementation has a very nice product structure, fits very well into CQ. Um, those kinds of things probably don't exist out in the wild, so you'd have to take into consideration your, your product structure uh, when Im importing it. And then the, the roadmap in CQ, uh, things they're looking at uh, is a product editor in AEM. So being able to edit some of the product information there when you're authoring right on the page. Uh, better event handlers for product data uh, plus content changes. Uh, making the shopping experience better. Um, essentially just better components. So a lot of that stuff, like the checkout, uh, shopping cart, is supposed to be improved. And then also uh, what's exciting is integration with their other cloud tools. So one of the things that typically goes along with an e-commerce system is recommendations. So they're going to be using Adobe Target for recommendations, uh, as well as uh, Target Search and Promote. And uh, just to show you that uh, AEM or Adobe is very serious about uh, their e-commerce framework, they've also uh, integrated with Intershop and Elastic Path. So Hybris isn't the only, uh, only partner they have on this. They're also looking at uh, other uh, platforms. But, um, you mentioned search and promote, and I know that in my experience, the search personalization has been a bit of a blind spot in many of these types of engagements because people don't recognize that a lot of requirements exist within the search organization at a different client. Um, have you had any experience with trying to integrate this with search outside of either AEM search or hybrid search? Integrate search and promote? No, well, I mean, search and promote is obviously yeah. an alternative to both of them. Have you run into Search and Promote or tried to use another search provider like Indeca or something else tied to a combined, this type of integration format where you're no. trying to bring content from both systems into a search index? No, I don't think so. I think we've, we've mostly worked on either side. So Solar with AEM, we've done a couple of those. And then we've also done Indeca with Hybris. Uh, we haven't worked with the official uh, integration to use an, an outside provider. I know that uh, Solar, you know, comes out of the box with uh, with uh, Hybris, and so you know that that could be uh, a solution for something that uh, like a smaller catalog or something. Because um, I, I think the, the the point that that really makes this complicated is when you're looking for um, personalization driving boosts and blocks or, or promotions yep. and, and, and that type of thing. So. I would imagine that the, the API from Hybris would support like the upsells and cross-sells and things like that, so that it's taken care of a little bit more for you. Mm, and okay. As long as you've imported those products in there, it just becomes sort of a, whatever my results are, in the JCR. 
Got it. I mean, that's... Because I, I, yeah, obviously I don't know what, what the feature set in Hybris is. I just know that CQ, I, I haven't, yeah, I have yet really to really see personalization yeah. be integrated into the search, into Lucene yeah. searching, so. But I think he did mention, so I think the, the search part of products come from Hybris for this. Right, so and I just don't know if that's yeah, personalized. That, I think that is, you mentioned that at the beginning. Yeah, and, and that's a good question. Something that we can look at after, I think. Um, so to sum it up, uh, we've seen uh, sort of a flip-flop here, more responsibilities for, for AEM, uh, since this is CMS-led. It's serving up pages, it's a landing, landing space for shoppers. Uh, again, we, we've got our great marketing content in AEM, easy authoring tools. Uh, but now we're, we're driving the product information, shopping carts, and checkout experiences. What allows us to do that is we can send that information back to, to Hybris. And um, another nice part of having AEM out in front is we can take advantage of the community features in AEM. And we're also still getting products from Hybris, but we're doing it in a different way. On the Hybris side, uh, we're, we're letting Hybris be a great uh, best of breed uh, e-commerce platform. Uh, it's still managing the, the product information. Uh, we're getting the search within the products. Um, and it's also processing the, the cart checkout and order fulfillment. So which one do you choose? Uh, the decision is pretty clear for us, but it obviously depends upon some of the things I talked about earlier, like cost, complexity, uh, time to market, and the, the org current organizations you have. Uh, if this was available in 2011, 2012, we would have used it for GHD. Um, you know, since then, Adobe's uh, made quite a few steps in addressing performance issues with the product. Can now support large catalogs. And um, a another really nice thing is you let uh, both products do what they do best. I think so. AEM gets to drive the experience across the the, the marketing side and the store. And you're still getting to do all of your, your e-commerce uh, stuff in hybrids. You guys have any questions? How do they scale in your scale? experience? So like, say from a capacity perspective, what, what is your range of users that you would normally expect a hybrid installation or hybrid instance to be able to support? versus the number of users that an AEM instance would support. And I'll let one of my hybrid guys enter, when enter you start the hybrid question. Pieces together. Well, I mean, you can certainly scale hybrid in front of or behind, behind CQ. I mean, you can, you can put a taxi and put a cluster, cluster behind it. I mean, it's, it's, it's ACTP calls from, from that side. So I don't, I don't know. Here on the CQ5 side, um, it's, I don't know if the, the commerce part has changed much of the scalability with having users on, on publish. You still have to do all the reverse replication.